afternoon guys, hope you are well, hope you've had a good week so far. Um, just wanted to do a preview for Middlesbrough, which is tomorrow. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get to, to see Luke today to do the video together. Uh, been working early this morning, so I haven't been able to get there. So, just thought I'd do a video on his behalf and for you guys to get my thoughts ahead of Middlesbrough. So, massive game. Every game is a massive game now. Um... There were a lot of positives to take from Saturday, but also I've looked back at the goals and, you know, what do we expect? We keep making the same schoolboy simple errors. This leading to goals and, you know, you get punished at this level. In League One, we might have got away with it more times than not due to the quality of the opposition we would have been facing. But that's the difference between League One and the Championship. There is a big gap. Um, and it all goes down to... The quality of the players, for me, we've got players in certain positions that just aren't good enough yet and we need them to be good enough now. You know, if they'd have been brought in maybe as squad players, I would have been okay with it, but we're just missing that quality. You know, it's now getting to the point where journalists are saying that if we'd have had a commanding centre defender or two at the start of the season, we'd be a mid-table team comfortably. Because every team that we're facing, opposition fans, manager at the weekend, Tony Mowbray, Blackburn fans commenting on our performance saying that we play some really good football would just look weak at the back and more braces that we play some really good stuff and that's coming from a vastly experienced manager that's coached in the Champions League with Celtic and also obviously in the Premier League with West Brom previously and he's a very good manager so it's good to hear that but then again it doesn't matter to us when we're losing games and we're bottom of the league Um so it's a, it's a massive game tomorrow. We've got to cut these mistakes out quickly. We've got to do it, you know, whether it's the system, whether we just need to keep it as simple as possible. I always say it, but we just seem to overcomplicate things. We're trying to do things in certain areas of the pitch that we're just not good enough at doing. If we had a Sergio Ramos or a Maguire in a team or even a, foot, a footballing player at the back that could play the ball out from the back, then I'd be okay with that. But I don't think we are. For me, Diaby, for instance, is just... A guy that wins your tackles, wins your headers, 100 percenter to get stuck in. Anderson, he, you know, I felt sorry for him because it was a simple mistake to give away. You know, if the pass isn't on or it's a 50-50, just don't do it. We're not in a position where we can be giving goals away, away from home and giving teams a head start. Before Blackburn scored in the first half, I thought we were very much in the game. Woodrow had a chance a couple of minutes early that he really should have buried, in my opinion. We have to be clinical away from home. You're not going to get loads of chances, but we create the more chances in the second half and we're still lost. Great character from the side to come back from two goals down twice. That's a great thing to show that they're fighting for the cause and they gave 110%, but the quality's missing uh, and that needs to improve and the board have got to back Struber in January. We've got to be in a position in January where even if we're two or three points out of the relegation zone race... And as long as we're in touching distance, then we've got a chance. And that's me hoping and being positive. I mean, it's hard to be because we've won one game in 16. We haven't won since August. You know, tomorrow is an opportunity away from home. It's a big opportunity. A six-pointer, if you have, you know, would still be bottom if we win. But the psychological aspect of it would be we'll close the gap to Borough. And Borough, you know, if they lose, you know, obviously I'm not concerned about them. I'm concerned about us, but it would have ramifications for them in their upcoming games. Um, but there's positives out of Saturday and there's also just outline negatives and it was just like the same old, same old at the back. The 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 effort and the attitude was much improved from Stoke and other games this season. But the application at the back, you know, if the ball isn't on, just get rid of it. Keep it simple. Get it in there half. Away from home, you can't be relying on passing the ball at the back and, and risking it. Um, so Borough tomorrow, massive game. You know, they'll have been disappointed you know, they were 2 0 up against Hull on Sunday and threw away a two goal lead at home. Turning point for me was if they had Marvin Johnson sent off in the first half with a needless tackle. There was no need to, to make that tackle. They didn't mean to hurt their player, their full back, but it was just a needless tackle at 2 0 up. And that goes down to game management. And after that, you know, I'm thinking, well, it was 2 0 at half time, but I thought if Hull get an early goal, you know, they can get something from it. And Jared Bowen, quality player for Hull, will be facing him this when, uh, this Saturday at Oakwell, him and Lip Grzycki. You know, two great players for all, and um, you know, I'm not looking forward to that, but you know, he got them two goals out of nowhere, really. And all really had chances to win that game. And you could hear the booze at the end of the Riverside. You know, Middlesbrough are a big team, and they should be, you know, 
back in the day, they were an established Premier League side under Steve McLaren, under Southgate, and under other managers. And even in the Championship last season, they finished seventh. I know they didn't like the brand of football under Tony Pulis, which not many fans do, but he's effective at what he does. He brings in experienced guys that know a structure, that know a system. And obviously Middlesbrough, you know, watching that every week for two years, it must be grinding. But uh, they brought their own guy in, Jonathan Woodgate, from the town. Obviously had a great career as a player. Former player, I think he was in the backroom staff with Pulis last season and he stepped up. I think Middlesbrough, I don't know if they've run out of the par parachute payments after the relegation, been three years out of the Premier League. It seems that they've cut back on finances and spending this season. They've still got some good players in the side. They shouldn't be where they are at all. The Somber longer in the side, House and Clayton. You know, Ayala at the back, Darren Randolph, he was the, named as the best keeper in the Championship last season. You know, um, they've got some good players in the side and they've got some good young players. You know, Middlesbrough have been renowned for having a good academy through the years. You know, they brought the likes of Downing through over the years. Um, Woodgate, obviously. Um, and I know I've got a lot of, actually got a lot of friends who are Middlesbrough fans, believe it or not. And they're really gutted about what's happening to their club. And uh, it must not be nice because obviously... You know, Newcastle are doing okay. Um, but the North East is, a, is is similar to South Yorkshire. Hotbed of football, you know, it's part and parcel of your life. It's such a passionate thing. And the guys up there, Teesside, is they're massive on the football. And obviously Middlesbrough is a big part. The football club's a big part of the town. So for them to be where they are in the league, it must be gutting. Obviously, they're a much bigger club than us. And that's just the way that it is historically and recently. And, um, you know, I think if, if, the, if we win tomorrow... You know, does Woodgate get the sack? I don't know. Um, Steve Gibson does give his managers time, but is there a time and a place that you have to make a change to keep your team in, in the in the championship? Because if they keep going on a downward hill towards um, towards Christmas and the new year, you know, it, mentally it's hard for teams to get out of it um, more often than not. They should have the place to get out of it, though. I've watched a few of their games or highlights and they're only losing by a goal or two. So is it focus? Is it that confidence? You know, they seem to let a lot of goals in late. They go ahead in games, but can't hold on to it. But they've got some good players in the side. Fortunately for us, Johnson, who looked like the most threatening player on Saturday, is banned. Obviously, got sent off in the first half against Hull, so he'll not be playing. We know Ashley Fletcher. We know what he can do. For me, he hasn't achieved what he would have gone on to do. He went to West Ham for big money, didn't he? Um, and then obviously went to Borough when they first came down from the Premier League. Went alone to Sunderland. He hasn't, you know, I think it's his second season at Borough full time. He hasn't really hit the heights of what people are expecting him. But, you know, I liked him at Barnsley. Obviously, that was four or five years ago, but he were always a trier and um, was a big part and was going into the league, into the championship from League One under Eckingbottom. So, you know, we know where he can do in a somber longer, proven player at this level. Probably past his prime, I would say. Not the player he was two or three years ago. I think if he'd have kept scoring like he did when he first went to Middlesbrough when he moved up from Forest, he probably would have been in the Premier League, but I think he is inconsistent. So for us tomorrow, we've just got to go up there and take the game to him. I think it's a game that we, you know, we're, f we're four points off, five points off at Borough, so we need to win. Like I said, even if we win, we're still at bottom, but I think psychologically getting into double figures, it, it's strange to say that in November we're still on nine points, but if we're getting to double figures... And close that gap, and then we're going to hold with momentum and confidence with his home game. You know, I said to Luke, if we can get four points out of the games against Blackburn and Borough, that'd be great. Obviously, the loss against Blackburn. So tomorrow it's a massive game. It's a massive game. Struber's had a bit more time to work the, with the players, had a bit more time to understand the ongoing issues at the, at the club in terms of the, of the personnel that we've got at the minute, and maybe had a bit more time to implement his system. And the, the players have got used to him a bit more and used to what he expects. Of of, uh, of the play of themselves, so that might work in his favour. We've got a day's extra rest. <laughs> I'm just looking. I'm trying to look at the positives here to try and, you know, try and give as much as a chance as possible. Um, so I'm going to go through my team sheet now. So my team tomorrow would be Radlinger in goal. I thought he had a decent game. I think for the third goal against Blackburn, I'm always a a favourite. I like my my keepers if there's a chance to catch it, to catch the ball. I think a lot of continental keepers like to parry and punch and push it out now. I don't know if that's the way the keepers are going now with this when they're making saves. But for me, I don't know if he could have done better. He made a couple of other good saves at times and uh, he'll probably give him another start. So I'd say Rad Linger in goal. I've got to say we've got to have his best players in his best positions. People are questioning Cavare sometimes this season with his attitude and his work rate and I agree with that. 
But when he's on his ball, when he's on his game, he is one of the best fullbacks in the league. And if he did this consistently, he wouldn't be at Barnsley. And the reason he's at Barnsley is because he doesn't do it every week and he switches off and sometimes he's there and sometimes he's not. For me, Kavar is a lot better option than Sibic. I think Sibic had a half okay, decent game. He was culpable of, of that. He was giving that silly free kick away for the third goal, which led up to their goal from the set piece on Saturday. But apart from that, he did okay playing out of position. He's not a natural right back. I would have Kavari in. He offers more pace. He offers us more going forward. Defenders are scared of Kavari going forward because he, he takes a player on. He's got a good cross on him and he's a lot more combative than Sibic. Sibic is a bit taller than Kavari and I think Sibic did okay. Actually, I've seen him play a lot worse this season. I don't rate him as a defender. Um, I don't think he's ready to for a, a full esteemed championship squad. If we'd have recruited properly and still brought Sibic in, he would probably have been a squad player this season and played the odd game and been a bench player. But it's obviously started every game. I don't know how. I don't want to be uh, sitting bullying Civic, but for me, I don't rate him. Um, for me, Cavare needs to start. It's as simple as that. Um, I've just looked at the presser from Struber. Hallam is injured. That's one of the reasons why I came off on Saturday and Dougal came on at, at half time. So it's going to be Diaby and Anderson by the looks of things. Um, I just hope that Struber's drilled them just to keep it simple, just to get it out. We're away from home. Wednesday night, you just get it in there half. Do the simple things. When you're down at the bottom, you can't be affording to to gambling and making silly errors. Because if you get, you know, if you do make them errors, you just look stupid. And we can't afford to keep doing it because that it's going it's going to cost us place in the championship, regardless of the of the ongoing issues with the recruitment side of things. If we keep making mistakes on the field, then we're FC UK, aren't we? Uh, left back Williams, I'm going to say that we're going to give him another go. I would like to see Pinios in the squad at least. I think with his experience, if there was any injuries, Pinios coming at least off the bench would offer us some would offer us some options. So Williams again, because I thought he had a good game at Blackburn, hard working lad and he gives everything. His crosses need to improve upon. That must be something that I must admit. A lot of the time we were just crossing it and just hoping rather than having actually knowing where it was going to go. Um, and getting it in first time, I think sometimes he dawdled on it a bit, but that's going to grow with confidence. He's been out of the squad for a long time, so hopefully he can replicate that performance and put a few consistent performances together. So that would be my back four, but I would like to see Pinios in the squad. I think his experience is something that we need. He's played in the Championship before with Forrest. You know, he's, he's one of the older senior members of the squad. I think he's only probably about 19, but um, he's somebody that's been there and done it, so we do need him on the bench at least for me. I would say at this moment in time over Ottawa, even though I ain't seen Ottawa play, so I can't really rate him. In the midfield, Dougal will probably start. I think Dougal made an impact when he came on on Saturday. I felt he gave us a lot more um, stability in the midfield, a lot more of a focal point, a lot more comfortable on the ball than Alma, obviously because Alma's out of position. Um, and I said that after the game against Saturday, Dougal should have started there and Halma should have played where Anderson started. So I think Dougal will start there. I don't know whether it's because he played internationals with Australia over back on yonder over in Asia earlier at the weekend, the gate in the week before. So I don't know if he's been travelling. I'm, I'm not sure if Dougal's involved or not, or he just thought I'll play Halma there. But for me, Dougal has to start in the City midfield option. If he's going to play the diamond, um. I would like to see Bearer play again. I think I'm going to give Bearer another chance because I think he did okay. I think, again, his confidence, for me, he's got a lot of good attributes. He's technically good on the ball. He does. He is a good passer of the ball, and he did some really nice moves on Saturday. For me, he's got to transition the ball better from when we're in a, in a, in a stood position to being on the move and causing their defence to be unorganised and to be all over the shot. For me, he is a bit predictable at times. And also he gets into great positions in the box to shoot and he doesn't shoot. I think he, I've seen him have one shot so far during his whole career at Barnsley and that was at South End last January in the FA Cup. So for me, Barry to start on the edge of the diamond. On the left-hand side, Mowat again, obviously is the captain. I thought he did a great game on Saturday. Um, <coughs> and on the right-hand side, I'd have Brown. Um, purely because of his work rate. Um, and I, I think he had an okay game on Saturday, but I don't think he's physically combative enough 
You know, for me, we should have never have sold more. That's my opinion. Some people don't rate more, and he had a great start at Wigan. But I think what he offers you would have helped us. Do you know what I mean? He, he he's a lot more beneficial to our side than to maybe maybe other teams. But he's gone now, so we can't change it. But for me, Brown would be on the right hand side of midfield, um, and I, I would have Chaplin behind Woodrow. People are saying start two up front, but I don't think Schmidt is ready to start yet. He might start him because obviously he knows him from Austria, so it might be different. But I think Chaplin, when he came on, got the goal, got the assist for the second goal, made an impact alongside Dougal. I think if we started with the team that we finished, we probably would have won that game, in my opinion. Chaplin, for me, has been one of the bright sparks of this season. Um, he's, a work, he's, he's a workhorse. He run for a brick wall for you. And where we are in the league, we need every one of them lads to be doing as Chaplin is doing. He's setting an example every week. He's given 110% regardless and um, I wish we had him last season under Stendhal. Um, really stepped up to the mark really well and obviously would draw up top. Subs would be uh, Collins as your keeper. <coughs> Sorry about that, guys. McGeehan as your midfielder. Uh, Schmidt as your striker. Luke Thomas. Uh, Pinios as your defender. Uh, Sibic as your, as your other defensive option. And... Probably Wilkes, I bring Wilkes back in, um, or Thomas. So scoreline, guys, I'm going to go for a positive one, 2-1 to Barnsley. I think it's a good time to play Borough. They might be shafted after being 2-0 up at home and losing two goals in the final half. And um, confidence, they're going to be the team under pressure. There wasn't a massive audience, or oh, audience, uh, <laughs> spectators at the Riverside on, sat uh, on Saturday. And that'll probably be even lower after that result and obviously being Wednesday night. Um, hopefully we can get at them early on get stuck into them if we can get into half time and even if it's even they're going to be the team under pressure we need the result but I think we, going forward I'm, I'm comfortable I'm, I'm confident that we've got the capability to actually threaten them it's at the back we need to stay in the game don't do anything silly just defend your set pieces don't be giving silly free kicks away keep it as simple as possible for now and in until Christmas in January and if we're in a position where we're eyeing the league then the board need to help Struber out regardless but we need to, the players need to listen to instructions and they need to realise, don't make the same mistakes over and over again, it, you know, just keep it simple. So 2-1 to Barnsley, um, scorer's going to be Woodrow and I'm going to say Chaplin, them two to get goals again. So see you later guys, hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you at Borough tomorrow.